Straight ahead on CCX News, a volunteer effort in Brooklyn Park where customers look out for a store. Plus, the last showing in Brooklyn Center as the city marks the end of a movie era. And later, falling head over heels for cookware. I always tell people that I should have held out for a better deal when I met him. The Robbinsdale couple who simmer up a good story at the State Fair. CCX News starts right now. Hello everyone and thanks for joining us. Festival Foods in Brooklyn Park has been closed because of fire since mid-July. It reopens next week, thanks in part to help from volunteers. Eric Nelson explains how Brooklyn Park residents are providing a helping hand to their neighborhood grocery store. It's just so heartfelt to know that they care that much that they want to come out and help get us reopened so they can shop again. It was all hands on deck today at Festival Foods. More than 40 volunteers showed up to restock the store. We got a chance to come out and help them and, and guys came in on their days off to do it. It was a full circle day for some. Get them back up and running. Fire caused Festival to close and 11 Brooklyn Park firefighters helped get it ready to open again. You have to get it in the right spot and you have to face all the food just perfectly so it looks good for the customer. Festival will be back in business on September 7th. Those connected with the grocery store are hungry for the relaunch. We're just looking forward. We're, we're ready to be open. Gene Atkins has worked in the store's bakery since 1988. So excited to see our regular customers. I know they miss us. Getting back on the job is icing on the cake for Atkins. Oh, it's going to be so exciting because everything they're getting, especially on Thursday, is totally fresh. Everything we are baking is straight out of the oven right to our customers. Definitely the freshest store in town. Uh, all the inventory is coming out uh, fresh from all of our distributors. Thanks to these eager volunteers, Festival is almost ready to open up. That's what we do as firefighters. We uh, help out as much as possible in the community. It's looking really good. It's a whole new clean store. Suddenly, it's all smiles in the aisles. I actually think we have 80,000 good people in Brooklyn Park. So, like I say, when you call for help, they're, they're there for you. When Festival does open, there will be over 30,000 new items on the shelves. In Brooklyn Park, I'm Eric Nelson, CCX News. Brooklyn Park City Council member Terry Parks came up with that idea to use volunteers to restock Festival. Well, today marks the end of an era in Brooklyn Center. After 17 years, today is the final day of business for Brooklyn Center's Regal Cinemas. Crews were busy today hauling away vending machines and arcade games, while moviegoers took in one last show before the theater shut down for good. Longtime residents say this is the fourth movie theater to close in Brooklyn Center. It's been 60 good years of movie theaters, so we really can't complain. Movie theaters are built on big properties, and development wants to come in for big properties, so it, it kind of is a sign of the times, yes. The theater opened back in 2000. Management sold the property to make way for Minnesota's first Top Golf entertainment complex. Demolition of the theater is expected to begin September 18th. A new luxury apartment complex in New Hope is starting to take shape. Construction started last month on the 182-unit Alatus apartment complex. Crews have been hard at work for the past few weeks on the first phase of the project, which involves driving 700 stabilization piles into the ground. City officials say it's a necessary step due to the soil conditions on the property. However, nearby residents will have to put up with a loud pounding sound through the end of September. By and large, uh, the residents have, have done a great job of understanding that this is a phase of construction, uh, that it's going to only be a temporary in nature, and that in, in the next coming months they're going to see the progression of a normal construction activity, and uh, that the noise hopefully should only last, the, the pounding noise should only last for another month or so. Rent at the apartment will range between $1,000 to $3,000 a month. The complex is scheduled to open in December of 2018. A new restaurant is coming to Ridgedale Center, one that is looking to hire nearly 300 staff members. Cheesecake Factory is building its second Twin Cities location. It's expected to make its new Minnetonka location in mid-October. The other location is at Southdale in Edina. A wide array of jobs are available from cooks and bartenders to servers and hosts. One interesting note, the Cheesecake Factory has made Fortune Magazine's 100 Best Companies to Work For list four years in a row.
School has already started for kids at a Maple Grove Charter School. The Minnesota Excellence in Learning Academy serves kindergarten through fifth grade students. The charter school added fourth and fifth grade this year and needed more space, so they moved from Brooklyn Park to the huge lower level of the Church of the Open Door in Maple Grove. School officials say they focus on underserved populations and tailor learning plans to students' abilities. Many times these students are the ones that fall through the cracks and we want to make sure that they're not falling through the cracks. We want to make sure that we are giving these students the same opportunities that other students have that might you know, live in a different area but may not see um, high quality education you know, opportunities. With nearly 300 students, the school has more than doubled in size since it opened in 2015. Tuesday is the first day of school for the Osseo School District, and it's not just students who get those nervous and excited back-to-school butterflies. Teachers do, too. We're trying to make things new and exciting and keep up with the trends. Um, you know, we always want to make it the best for them each year, and, and we hope, you know, we've done a lot of learning over the summer, um, so we take our new learning and, um, you know, hopefully put it into place so it's the best environment for our students. At Elm Creek Elementary in Maple Grove, the school year begins with some great news. This week, staff found out Elm Creek is one of eight elementary schools statewide to be named a Minnesota School of Excellence. Principal Beth Ness says it's a distinction her school has been working hard to achieve over the past two years. And every year we want to get better and better. There's still areas that Elm Creek needs to to grow in and we need to keep our energy in the things that are our strengths still too. So it was a goal, it got us focused, but we're going to continue to be focused and do our best by our students. The designation comes from the Minnesota Elementary School Principals Association. Still ahead on CCX News, members of a Robbinsdale Garden Club put their growing skills to the test at the State Fair. Plus, the Providence Academy football team gets set for the season opener. We will have a preview of the Lions. But first, perfect fair weather on Friday, 70s and sunny. Well, here's a unique competition at the Minnesota State Fair. Who can put together the best scarecrow? Two entries came from Robbinsdale residents. Kim Kaiser entered this scarecrow made with fabric and a broom. And Joanna Sorensen was the name on a team entry of Cookie Monster in overalls. He conveniently had a bucket of Sweet Martha's chocolate chip cookies at his feet. You'll find the scarecrows at the Horticulture Building. Well, garden clubs from all over the metro are vying for blue ribbons at the State Fair. A reporter, Sonia Goins, goes in the garden to show us why the Robinsdale Diggers Garden Club is a strong contender. You might call this the Super Bowl of gardening. Once you get that first ribbon, you're hooked. 20 different garden clubs from across the metro are competing in the Federated Garden Clubs of Minnesota Flower Show. And this is kind of our annual you know, all come together and present our, you know, wonderful things that we've had in our gardens for the year. If it blooms, there's a good chance you'll find it here. Perennials, annuals, and some new varieties. It's called Hearts Bonnie. Fifteen members of the Robbinsdale Diggers Garden Club are participating. Daniel Smith has four entries. And this here is my succulent. The goal is to show off the very best of a flower or leaf. You're cutting a little specimen off and that, and then you put it into a bottle wrapped with tin foil or bubble wrap, whichever you prefer, and you put it in the top of the bottle with water in it, and you just stage the flower so that it looks, or the leaf, so that it looks the best. Betty Beck started this amaranthus plant from seeds. And this is Love Lies Bleeding, which is one of the uh, most popular ones. She has 20 plants and three floral designs in the competition. Probably 20 to 30 hours prepping. I was here until 1 o'clock this morning getting ready. Judges are looking for plant perfection. I'm looking for uniformity in in color, in form, in, in the entire plant. It should be uniform throughout the entire plant. So the spacing of the petals, the spacing of the leaves. While the gardeners are eyeing blue ribbons, they say budding relationships with fellow gardeners is the top prize. Friendship, knowledge, uh, I enjoy judging every anything about flowers and it is, it's just fun. At the Minnesota State Fair, Sonia Goins, CCX News. 
Still ahead, connecting over cookware, meet a Robbinsdale couple with a unique state fair experience. But first, Terry Tuma has some tips if you're set to do some Labor Day weekend fishing. John Jacobson is in next. I'm John Jacobson with sports. The high school football season kicks off Thursday for many teams around the area, but a handful don't play until Friday night, including the team from Providence Academy. Here's a look at the Lions in today's training camp report. There will be some new players on the field for Providence this fall. 16 athletes from Maranatha Christian Academy are buying for playing time. MCA had previously co-opted with Osseo for football, but the Mustangs are now here players from both Providence and Heritage Krishna Academies. You know, that's a huge change for any team, but I feel like we really came together as a unit. Defensively, we're really just gelling together, you know, in that scrimmage, I thought we performed really well and we're hoping to shatter some expectations this year. It's been a great process. We've just got great kids, great families, and it's been a real pleasure to have them a part of the co-op. We've been able to spend the summer doing a lot of things together. By the time we started our preseason schedule here in August, we had a good chance to acclimate to each other and get used to each other. On offense, the Lions will need to replace Jackson Baird, a four-year starter for whom a lot of the offense ran through last year. Province returns more experience on the defensive side of the ball with six starters back. Key players to watch for are wide receiver safety Zach Fritz and Jackson Sonderby. Running back and defensive tackle Taylor Meisner. Defensive end and offensive tackle Mark Richelson. While Max Anderson takes over for Baird at quarterback. This should be a more balanced offensive attack. But this year we have a lot of different weapons. I wouldn't be shocked if you see the stat sheet a lot spread out this year. Like we got a lot of good players, um, really top to bottom. So I, I'm thinking it will be a lot more spread out than last year for sure. The team has had the summer to gel, with some of the new Maranatha players competing for playing time right away. We play the best 11, and so there will be starters from Maranatha right away. So we've had a good chance to evaluate over the summer. We spent the last two weeks evaluating as, as we prepare for this week's game. We'll continue to evaluate, and I'm, I'm certain there will be starters from all schools in our co-op. A 6-2 regular season in 2016 was spoiled by a first-round section playoff exit. The Lions say that's a great motivator for this year. We, we have a chip on our shoulder, and we have something to prove now that we're not just uh, some team that can do well in the regular season. We want to make it deep, and that's our end goal. Here's a capsule look at the Lions. They finished six and three last fall. Derek Ashey is now in his fourth year as the head coach. A total of nine starters are back for the Lions who play a tough opponent in their opener Friday. They are at St. Croix Lutheran. Practicing a little patience along with the willingness to move around a lake can make a difference on how many fish you might catch. Here's Terry Tumo with today's CCX Fishing Tip. I was out fishing here very, very recently, and I just noticed some anglers. I try to watch how, uh, how anglers are approaching a body of water, and obviously these folks knew this lake that I was on. I was fishing bass. They were fishing uh, bluegills, and what they did is they went to the, this one spot that was very, very early in the morning. Actually, it was just at daybreak. They went to the one spot. They Obviously, they anchored, and they just sat there and fished for probably two hours at the minimum, and then all of a sudden, when I was coming in from bass fishing, they started to troll. And you could see that they were not catching any fish. But what really what I'm stating here is we talk so often about this game plan. But you know, have four or five spots picked out and then work those specific locations. Don't just anchor in one spot. Hey, if we don't catch any fish, they're not biting. That's not the case. And so what we should have done, or those specific folks should have done, is they should have had uh, a different location, maybe another four spots, and then keep on moving not starting to troll for northern pike or trolling for walleye but what happens then is that when we're out there and we start to have two species well you know this fish is not going to bite this species is not going to bite we're going to switch over to another species pick out one species four or five spots and you'll be very very productive just give that a try Thanks, Terry. A reminder, live football tonight, Thursday on CCX as Maple Grove hosts Osseo and then Friday night when Breck plays at Columbia Heights. And that's all for sports. Alex and Mike, back to you. Big start to the season. Thanks, John. Up next, a Robbinsdale couple who fell head over heels for cookware and for each other. We'll be right back.
Fairgoers might enjoy the fun of the Minnesota State Fair, but for the people who run some of the booths inside the fairgrounds, it's a lot of hard work. And that is true for one Robbinsdale man who has been selling at the State Fair for more than 40 years. Reporter Shannon Slatten shares his story. If you truly want to understand the people who come to the Minnesota State Fair, look beyond who comes for the music, past the people who come for the rides. The next thing I'm going to do is like potatoes. I love potatoes. And it's not necessarily all about the food either. Does anybody like cheese out there? Instead, go to the grandstand and find a salesperson. I'm going to do some boneless chicken breasts here. Whose entire fair experience depends upon understanding people. You learn to identify who buys and you know the, the key is everybody likes to buy something but nobody wants to be sold anything. Butch Broberg from Robbinsdale has sold stainless steel waterless cookware at the Minnesota State Fair since 1976. We call it diamond craft because it's kitchen jewelry and as we always tell people when you see the price you realize oh I would call it kitchen jewelry. Yeah. Selling at the fair is about connecting with crowds of people daily. We're exposing ourselves to more people than we would in a whole week in the homes. Customers who have bought before come back. There's not a day at the fair that we do not sell uh, a set of cookware that somebody's bought before. Butch says reconnecting with customers is what he loves. The fair has been fun. I mean, it's like, like a family reunion. But perhaps his favorite repeat customer. I actually sold Rhonda cookware uh, on a single working girl program back about 1982. Is the one he sold China to years ago. Pretty, it's pink, it's feminine. In 1997, Rhonda called to put in another order. We got to be friends and now I'm paying for the China sale. But and they married three years later. He always said that if we had had a girl, we had two boys, but if we had had a girl, we would have named her Elizabeth. After the China. After the China. Butch and Rhonda laugh about their story. I always tell people that I should have held out for a better deal when I met him. And continue to work the fair each year, connecting with people they know they will see again. It's really rewarding when people come back and say, thanks for selling me this, okay? The best investment I ever made. And, um, yeah, you, you know, that's what keeps us coming back. At the State Fair, Shannon Slatten, CCX News. If you want to meet Butch and Rhonda, you can find the Diamond Craft Cookware booth on the back wall in the lower level of the grandstand. And check out the cookware, too. But worthy couple to meet. You never like. know what will happen coming out of the fair. <laughs> that's right? true. That does it for us. Thanks so much for joining us. And we will see you back here again Friday starting at 4.